Hello everyone, welcome back to Mama's Orchids and Backyard. I'm gonna do an update on my vegetable and flower gardens today. Let me take you to the yard long beans area. Um, it's also called asparagus beans, I believe, and they're fairly long beans. They're not quite a yard, but it's a good um, sometimes a foot and a half. And um, they are such an easy grower. They also are very uh, aggressive. So if you don't tr keep it trimmed back, it can take over the garden. Um, it's very productive, obviously, and uh, very tasty. And this is how long they are about. And you kind of have to gauge when to harvest them. When the inside starts showing a little bit plumpness, um, then it's ready. They grow so quickly that if you forget to harvest them on the correct day, they get too big the next day, kind of like the okras. Speaking of okras, let's go over there next. This is my okra area. And then this is my tomatillo. Uh, I've never grown tomatillo before. I normally um, grow just tomatoes, but this year I wanted some tomatillos to uh, maybe make some sort of salsa with it. And uh, boy, this one is very productive. There's lots of flowers, um, but I haven't seen any tomatillos yet. And um, I don't know when that actually happens. So, And over here is uh, some bush beans. Uh, Contender is the variety. Okay, I'm going to swing you right back to the flower area where my large um, arch, uh, it's made of cattle panel. And uh, on there I have two baskets of um, vincas. And on the other arch is just one single um, basket of um, vincas. And some of these vincas I grew from seeds. And specifically, I like the Cora cascading type. And they're so disease uh, resistant. They, uh, and they love the heat in Texas. They seem to thrive and bloom and bloom and bloom. This is the one flower that I know that can bloom so well and last through our winter. So they're perennial for us. Next, I have this crown of thorn, the red variety or pink, and uh, it is also um, very heat tolerant here, but it doesn't last for our winter very well. I usually get a huge amount of die back by the end of the year, sometime down to the stump level, but it grows back on its own every year. And here is the yellow one. I used to have a giant pink one, but unfortunately that died. It was too big to be brought in. Here is my rainbow color plumeria. It's a good eight foot tall one and this one is a yellow one right here and it's about um, six feet tall and they are so fragrant. I also planted some uh, sunflower uh, in the front and the front one did not get taken by the squirrels but the back ones right here got taken by the squirrels or at least I think they're squirrels that took them. And this one is a dwarf size fig. It stays short, so it's easy to harvest. It's the variety called Miss Figgy, I believe, and it's um, almost ripening, so I better pick it soon before the squirrels or something gets to them. Um, this is my large um, plumeria. It's a pink variety, and I put a bunch of stems together that give it a bouquet effect. And next I have plumbago, very prolific in this area in uh, reminisce of a tropical flowers. And I am a first time peach grower. I uh, got very lucky with this tree that I picked. Uh, in this picture it looks a little wilted. I'm just waiting for the sun to die down before I start watering so that um, it can get rehydrated again. And this is another large full pot of um, pink plumeria. Yeah, I've got too much plumerias. This one is a color pot, a variety of annuals, uh, angelonias, uh, coleus, and uh, marigolds. And uh, we have zinnias here. I have a several colors of zinnia. Um, this fuchsia pink and yellow. And uh, I used to have a velvet red one, but uh, it didn't sprout this year. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'm also trying out this um, candy stripe variety of Xenia. I think this is a keeper, this uh, variety. I'm going to try to save the seeds. And in this area where, where the vegetable garden is, there's some Xenia ju that just reseeded from last year. It's like getting a free plant. Don't you love that? And this is a Mandevillia. And these are my small variety of um, hostas. I've had these for over 20 years now and they keep multiplying. They are great, but I can't seem to grow the giant hostas. The snails and slugs keep eating them all before they ever get uh, big enough. And then this next one is jasmine. Um, it's Sambac jasmine and it's so fragrant and makes you want to just pluck it and put it in your tea. And here is my strawberry tower. I've been able to get a few strawberries, not as many as I would like, but I think first year is, uh, is just the way it is. It just needs to get established. And also I think my heat, again, um, this Texas heat is just too, um, too uh, harsh on the strawberries. And then I'm going to show you some pictures of my harvest day by day, basically, not consecutively, it's just randomly as every day. One of the, my favorite activity every morning is to go out to the vegetable garden and see what needs to be harvested. Then I either put it in the sink or the counter or basket and just take pictures of them. Um, I just feel so proud of being able to grow some of these vegetables for my family. So a lot of times what I pick from the garden that morning will determine uh, what we make for the day. And a lot of times it'll take um, two to three days of harvest to have enough for a particular meal, like um, the early seasons for green beans. Um, I think it took me two to three days uh, in order to accumulate enough to make uh, one meal of green beans. And then now coming into summer, I'm getting too much green beans. And uh, what I do sometime, will I'll blanch it and then freeze it for the rest of the summer. And then uh, okra also, um, I'll, I'll accumulate it and it'll be enough for gumbo. Or stew okra or fried okra. Now last year I was able to leave some of my tomatoes on the vine and let it ripen. But this year animals are getting very smart and they're picking my tomatoes uh, as they get uh, slightly ripened. So now I am picking them green and that's why you see so many green tomatoes in the sink. Um, it's because I'm picking them before the animals get to them and then I'll ripen them on the window. They're not as good as ripened tomato on the vine but Hey, this is what I need to do to keep my tomato from the squirrels. And this is like my favorite tomato. This is purple Cherokee. Black creme is also a favorite. And we love to make tomato sandwiches almost every single day lately. And the first time I ever had tomato sandwich, I thought it was so weird. Um, it was a Mennonite friend of mine who has, um, whose parents have a garden and they had so many nice looking tomato just beautiful tomatoes and they would make me tomato sandwiches one day and never tried it before didn't have any meat just mayonnaise tomato on two slices of bread and it was just the best tasting sandwich i've ever had ever since then i just had to grow fresh tomato to make that same thing and something I saw in the grocery store the other day that's neat, um, these are shayotes with thorns, but they're not rough thorns like the cactuses. They're just very soft thorns. Um, I'm curious to try them one day. Now I know that most of our viewers on this channel are orchid lovers and uh, I'm just curious though, um, do you all just grow orchids or um, do you also grow vegetables or flowers or I know a lot of people grow tropicals along with um, orchids, but uh, I'm curious what else do you grow? Um, leave me a comment. Thanks. Okay, I think it's all for me today. Thanks a lot for joining me. I hope you all have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.